For today's tips and tricks video, we're going to look at how we can create a component that contains both 3D components and 2D components, which can be activated and controlled using tags and scenes. The reason you'd use this is if you wanted to add a complex model for your 3D views, but then if you wanted to use plans or create plans or elevations, you can have simplified 2D versions. What we're looking at now is actually a model from our V-Ray for SketchUp online course. Um, let's bring in a high detailed tree. Let's go Window, 3D Warehouse, and let's look for a tree. I actually want to push up the file size that we're searching for because I want to intentionally choose a very large model. Let's go for this one here. Let's inspect it. It's a 33 megabyte file. Now before we download this, I do want to confirm for you the size of the project or model. At the moment, it's only 30 meg. Megabyte, sorry. Let's go ahead and download this. And when we download it, obviously it's going to increase the size of the project file. With that done, Let's go ahead and place this with a single click. Now normally you obviously wouldn't want to cover up the whole house with the tree, but the house is just background for us today. The focus is the tree, so one click to place that. And so let's see now what that's going to look like in V-Ray. So I'm going to use the uh, lowest possible settings in V-Ray here and produce a very low quality small render just so that we can rush through this. Obviously what V-Ray is, it's a photorealistic rendering engine and it converts your SketchUp model into a photorealistic render. Okay, with that done, we're not always going to want to use such a high quality component all the time. Especially because if you start adding a lot of these, it could actually start slowing down how SketchUp performs and also can increase the file sizes, which once again slows down performance. So let's go ahead and save this project um, and I'll just name it with tree just to show you the difference in size now of the project file. So that's gone from 30 meg up to 60 megabytes. Pretty much as you'd expect. We'll address the size issue later, but let's look at creating those 2D components for this 3D model. So first of all, let's inspect what we have. The overall component is in an untagged. Inside that overall component, is the actual tree component itself and it's separated between there's two components inside the overall component the person there and the tree let's actually put the tree now into a tag that i've pre-created and i'm going to put it into the type v-ray tag now you can name this tag whatever you want but that's how i'm going to use it I actually want to hide the rest of the model now just to focus in on the tree so i'll hide rest of model and I'll go for a front view in parallel projection. I'm using shortcuts here, uh, but um, you can use the drop down commands if you need to. I'm just going to place a ba very basic rectangle across the cross, se cross section of the tree. And this is the surface that we will use to create our 2D version of the tree. So what I need to do, I'm actually going to pull this away in front of the tree so that it sits between us and the tree, or the camera and the tree, just like that. And I've turned on X-ray there, X-ray mode. Back to my plan view, and now we can see how the tree sits inside that rectangle. I'm just going to use the freehand tool to trace that out. And of course, with the freehand tool, you can add as much detail in inverted commas as you like, or just make it a very basic shape. And you don't even have to use the freehand tool if you didn't want to. You could use a series of arcs or straight lines or other shapes. Um, it's basically whatever, however you want to represent, in this case, a tree. But obviously, this can be done with pretty much any object that you want to have simplified and complex versions of the same component. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I want to add the trunk, obviously. So I'll add that few lines there. Now we need to do a bit of cleanup. Let's uh, use the erase tool 
to clean up that separation. I mean, it's up to you. You don't have to if you want to have the trunk and uh, the rest of the tree a different color. And there you have it. That's our 2D uh, elevation type simplified representation of that complex tree. I'll turn X-Ray off now. And now let's convert this into a component. So right now that's its own component. This tree, let's put it into a component or this outline of the tree. Select it all, make it a component. And we need to set the component axes because this is where the tree will rotate around as it faces us. So that's the origin, the base of the center of the tree. The red direction is basically 90 degrees from uh, where we're facing. I just use the consistent, the same direction as in the existing model. And then green, we also have to choose that direction, which is facing away from us, basically. Let's give it a proper name. And this is the elevation version of this tree. So tree 001 elevation and always face camera. That's the important one. That's what we need to turn on. Shadows face sun as well and replace selection with component. Let's go ahead and create that component. Notice straight away that face now, that 2D face is constantly facing us no matter where we move the camera, except if we went really highly elevated. I wanna move that now so that it converges with the um, origin of the existing 3D detailed tree. Place that there, just the move tool, nothing fancy. So now when we look around, we can see how they uh, sort of, it represents that tree in a 2D simplified sense. Let's leave the component now. Don't forget we're inside a component and we can see what's going on. Let's activate the finish scene. I do need to uh, rotate around just to show you one more time, but we do need to turn off the visibility of this 2D tree while we uh, are in the 3D view. So let's turn off, create a new tag, sorry. And let's call this type underscore elevation because these are the components that we want to be visible when we have elevations active. Cool. So type elevation has now been created and assigned to that 2D elevation. So now obviously we can control the V-Ray objects and the elevation objects separately, their visibility. This allows us now to go back to the finish scene turn off the elevation elements and update the scene. Now, every time we open up the finish scene, I'll click it now, you can see that it only shows the 3D object, which is what we wanted. Obviously, type elevation is turned off. Let's now create a new scene, uh, which will be an elevation. So we will want to show the elevation scene. I'm gonna go to a parallel projection front view here, scroll around a little bit. Let's turn off the V-Ray tree, turn on the elevation objects, create that new scene, and we'll name it Elevation 01. That way, when I switch between finish scene and elevation scene, the tree uh, switches between the appropriate 2D and 3D versions. In fact, um, just if you wanted to, you can go ahead and change the material of that tree. Uh, not often, I mean, sometimes you'll have those types of trees. Let's make sure we've selected the right component, in this case, the type elevation tree. And I'm just going to choose a glass and apply that to that tree. Switching between the finished 3D version and the elevation version there. Let's now add another type, but this another type of 2D component, but this time I want to make it a uh, plan version. So open up the component, go into Window, 3D Warehouse, and let's type in a 2D plan tree. And obviously this is going to be a very low model size or file size, so let's uh, choose the appropriate one. Let's go ahead, look through these. I'm actually going to use this one here. 29 kilobits, that's fine. Let's go ahead and download that. Yes, directly into my model. Now, 
Notice how the uh, component here is just dancing all over the place. Uh, I'm going to place it on the open space there because the terrain is so uneven here that it, it's kind of dancing all over the place. I want to have a bit more control. I don't want it to come in uneven. So I'll place it there at the first place. That confirms that it's flat. Uh, and then I'll move it into the correct location. This um, plan view of the tree has not been scaled properly yet. So let's scale it. Turn on the V-Ray tree. D turn on top-down view. And then scale. Uh, scaling from the corner, but uh, I want to scale around the center. So I'll hold down Control at the same time, or Option in a Mac. And um, that allows me to scale about the center. Now, notice there's a little bit of a... Uh, let's turn off the V-Ray tree. It's in the way. Um, I want to get rid of the shadow. So I'm going to just erase that line that's creating the shadow. Notice also that because the terrain is undulating, it's kind of cutting in to our plan view of the tree. So I will want to move it, but notice it's not actually inside our tree component. So as I click through these, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to cut this plan view, control with a cut, and then paste in place, which is edit, paste in place. So now that means uh, the plan version of the tree is actually inside the component, which is what we wanted. So I'm, I don't want that interaction with the ground happening, so I'm going to elevate this to the full height of the tree. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's not covered by anything. Now the important thing, of course, let's create a new type of tag. This is going to be a type uh, for plans. So this is, these are the kind of objects that we want visible when we're accessing plan scenes. So we'll apply it to the type plan, go back to our top-down view, zoom out a little bit, just rearrange our camera, and let's say now create a scene, minimize materials. Uh, of course, we should probably turn off the elevation tree as well, or elevation type objects. Let's create a new scene, and we'll call this plan site. What that shows us now is that we have three scenes, all, all accessing the same component, but the component now changes itself to be appropriate for the type of scene that's being created. Notice the uh, we forgot to turn off the, the plan type for the tree there, for this scene, sorry, so I did that then and updated the scene. Same thing's going to happen here, so I'll turn off the elev uh, sorry, turn off the plan type and update that change for this elevation. And then finally, the plan for the site should be correct. So what this allows us to do now is to continue to use this object and make copies of it and all versions of, obviously because it's all one component, um, we can see that the 3D, 2D elevation, and 2D plan versions continue to follow along, no matter which one we move, because they're all one object. Let's save that component. So I've right-clicked onto the component, save as. It's a type of plant in my components library, so I'll put it tree 01. So this is saving the entire component, the 2D elevation, plan, and 3D versions. Now if I wanted to, all I need to do to bring this in is left click and hold and drag it in. Notice though that the origin for that component is incorrect. That's because when we saved that when I saved the component, I didn't uh, reassign the origin properly. So let me show you how to do that now. See the origin sitting out there towards the left, which is completely uh, useless for us. So let's now move all of these objects, including the person, all of these subcomponents, I suppose. We're going to move them to the origin so that next time we want to place this component, it actually gets placed at the uh, origin, which is uh, which makes a lot more sense. And I suggest or recommend that you do this for all components you ever use. Just make 
some kind of uh, consistent rule with where your objects sit in relation to their origin. So that when you do that drop, drag and drop functionality with components, they'll line up properly. Let me show you that. I'll need to right click onto that component which I've just modified, save as, and I'm just going to replace the original one. And now when I bring it in, there we are. It's actually placing exactly the way we want it to. If I save this entire project now, let's look at the size of the model. We're actually still sitting at 60 meg, which is expected. So there is a way that we can use V-Ray in this case, if you do have V-Ray, to uh, downsize the, these components. And it's called using a proxy. So to do this, we actually need to open up the component, the overall component, find and select just the V-Ray type component, so the high detailed version of it, and then we'll export as proxy or export proxy. We need to choose a destination for this proxy. And so notice here, this is not a SketchUp file. It's going to save this as a VR mesh. So it's a, it's a, a V-Ray specific type uh, file type. And I'll export that. And so what's happened now is V-Ray is replacing that complex object with a simplified object that it's generated for us. So even though in SketchUp what we see is these very simplified objects, when V-Ray reads them, it'll see the full detailed version. And that's important because it means we can continue to add more and more super high detailed objects and yet um, not slow down our model. Let's have a quick look. Just proving a point. Okay. So as you can see, even though we're only seeing the low quality versions, V-Ray is seeing the high quality versions. Notice though I didn't um, reassign that proxy to be the right layer. So let's put that onto the right tag, sorry. So the V-Ray object, the V-Ray proxied object, component should go into the V-Ray uh, type, V-Ray tag. Now all of these scenes will work as we want them to. I'll turn those all on and then save that. As a new type of component, it's going to be tree001 and it's proxied. I probably should have just called it proxy. And now when we save the project, go save as proxied. Let's inspect the size of this file now. Aha, so now that we've saved it and even after proxying it, we've actually increased the size. That's because we need to go into the component section in the default tray. We will find the original tree is still part of the model. Here, yeah? Both actually are componentized or proxied and the full version. So we'll ex go to the detail section and purge unused. It's important we don't use the purge unused in the Windows Preferences window though. Now when we save that, we can see it's gone down from 63 to 33. So we've only increased the file size by 3 megabytes instead of 30 megabytes. Now, just like when we brought in this tree, notice we can drag in that model instead. And so from now on, we only need to bring in a 3 meg object instead of a, a 30 meg object. Just like that. And this can be reused in any of our projects. And all the same tags follow along uh, with that component. That concludes the class.